Psalms 34, a Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. That's out of 1 Samuel 21, 13. It's where David's on the run, he comes up to the, to the door, he starts scribbling and having the saliva pulled down his beard. He changed, he framed himself, an actor. He was in trouble. I will bless the Lord, make the Lord happy. The prodigal son said, I will go back to my father and repent. I will bless the Lord, but it's not finished. It is at all times. I'm going to make God happy on Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, well, those are my times. I've heard Christians say it. My, my time for the Lord is on Sunday morning. Sunday night. Excuse me. Midweek service. All times. You get up in the middle of the night to use the facilities. Uh, thank the Lord. Use that time to pray. You can't sleep. Use it to pray. His praise, God's praise, shall continually be in my mouth. I mean, we just had that stupid football game. You know, all the praises, the team. No, it's all about God. Everything's to be about God. And when you're not praising God, you're sinning, and you need to confess your sins. My soul, I mean, the Bible says, Paul says, rejoice evermore. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. There's a proper boasting, not a prideful boasting, but there again, it says a boast, exalting, praising, blessing. It's almost, I, I, can't, I don't want to say it like this, it's almost like a, a holy prideful, but pride is a sin. It's telling God how good you are to God, not me. It's testimony. What God has done. Not what the doctor's done, not what you know, the, the employer, not what you have done, not what any, but what God has done. The humble, that's opposite of pride, shall hear thereof and be glad. It is a per proper time for a church to have such times of service. And it's got to be done respectfully that you have a time of testimony to the Lord. Now, I know of a ch few churches I, I've been in, they've had a time of testimony. And you got to be careful because somebody raise their hand, get up and start talking about how good anything but God is. And they start talking and you go far from God. And they start talking about themselves, or they start talking about somebody who's helped them out. Or they start talking about anything, a noun that is not God. But it is pro perfectly proper to have a time, let's just talk about how good the Lord has done, and how good the Lord is doing. Oh, magnify means make up bigger. Make out more. Use a magnifying glass so you can make the letters bigger. Use a microscope so you can make those little tiny things you can't see. You make them bigger. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now look at look at the invitation David puts out. Come on, let's go, let's go together. Let's go praise God. Let's go worship God. Let's go make God happy. Let's just exalt God. And let us exalt. Praise, honor, glorify his name together. His name is above all names. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. I sought the Lord. That's what we're to do. Go after God. Jesus said, where your treasures are. You know, people go after treasures. They go after, you know, shipwrecks. They go after, you know, into caves. They find, try to find gold and silver. And we're supposed to go find God. And we find God, he will give us what we need, not what we want. 
I sought the Lord and he heard me. So seeking God is calling out to God. There is no treasure map to find God. Oh, here's God, this big black X. No, it ain't it. Lord God, I'm having trouble. Lord God, I need your help. Lord God, I'm praying. And deliver me from all my fears. Anxiety. Now, there's two types of anxiety. Now, there's an anxiety in the body where your body chemistry is off. Okay, you need help. Jesus said, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. If your body is sick and you need attention, okay, there you go. But some anxiety is just, you know, it's overdone, it's overdwelling, and let's just give me a pill. Oh, on God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, the Bible says. A pill is not an answer for everything. And then come up with, today we got all these initial, initials, ADD, AD, and all the, you know, all you're doing in most cases is making psychi psychiatrists rich and making the pharmaceutical companies rich. And you just need to get right with God and seek God. Everybody has anxieties. It's built into us. The, 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 the spirit of fear is sometimes healthy. You're sleeping in bed and you smell smoke. You're supposed to get up and panic. That guy is coming down the road and he's in your lane. You are supposed to panic. All right? You know, if you're pregnant and something feels well, uh, weird and unright in your belly, you are supposed to panic. But when you just panic over the stupidest little minute kind of things, you need help and the doctor ain't going to help you. You need to get right with God. If you're worried about dying and, and, and what will happen to you after you die or when you die, you need to get right with God. You need to come to God because that's God. I mean, don't let a psychiatrist, don't let a medical doctor try, oh, everything's going to be comfy here. Take this red pill and then in the afternoon take the blue pill and then take two white pills before you go to bed. That ain't it. Now, I'm not against that. When my wife, a couple times in the hospital, was delivered upsetting news, I told her, I said, listen, give her a tranquilizer. It's upsetting. She, she, she's not doing well. She's not feeling well. She's upset. Give her something to calm her down. But, you know, that's it. You know, don't bring it home. Don't get too used to the pills. Don't become dependent on the pill. That's just as much as a sin, too. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. It's in Timothy. I think it's Second Timothy. I mean, all our medical problems can be found in the Bible. Now, listen, if you cut off your arm and you're bleeding to death, Second Timothy 1, go to the doctor. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, when it comes to anxiety. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. So there is a spirit of fear. God didn't give us that spirit of fear. But of power. God's given us power to do overdo anxiety. And of love. And of a sound mind. And again, if your body is off chemically correct. And you got to get it correct. You need help. But then again, it says God has not given the spirit of, uh, uh, of fear and anxiety that has no, nothing to it. Like I said, you smell smoke. That is in us. You know, there's trouble. I got to go figure it out. But, you know, I, I don't know what to speak because I don't know much about this. But there are just seems like to me when I'm reading on faith, there's just all kinds of feelings that, you know, if you get out of your little comfort zone, you break your comfort bubble, and you realize you got to grow up, and you're going to have pain, you're going to have suffering, you're going to have a bad day, you don't need a pill, and you don't need initials, and you don't need a doctor. You need to move on. You need to enjoy your life. Man, all the things I, I look back today, growing up as a boy... No wonder my mom and dad have gray hair. No, I, you know, I didn't think about what I did was deathifying, but today I look like, wow, by the grace of God, he kept me alive. 
We lived. <laughs> Today, they don't allow kids to live. They put, and they don't allow them to be, even I, I, I was giving that Ritalin in, in school because your, your child is too hyper, he's too active. And here, give him these pills. My mom would give me the pills during the school season. When summer was, was up, she'd take me off the pills. And hey, he's perfectly fine, kid. So he says, I sought the Lord. And he heard me, he delivered me from all my fears. Take it to the Lord in prayer. James says, we receive not because we ask not. Lord God, I'm worried about losing my job. What are you going to do? And I've come to, and listen, I worry too, okay? I'm not going to tell you I'm not with worry. And they're saying, and I've come to the conclusion, what I worry about, I can't do nothing about until it comes. And a lot of times you find out when you worry about things, you can't control it. And then what your, wor your worst worries are, they usually don't happen. And if you're in the Lord and you're seeking the Lord and the Lord's protecting you and you're doing right with the Lord, the Lord will take care of you. Now, if you're worried because you're outside of living of God and you're doing your own little thing and you're going, rebelling against God as Adam and Eve hid against God, why did they hide? Because they did what God told them not to do. Now, if, if a cop car pulls up right now in front of my house and the cops start walking up to my front door, I don't... If I did do something wrong, accidentally, I have no idea what I did wrong. If it's bad news about someone in the family, well, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to just take the news. They might want information that, or something. I don't know. And the cop, you know, if I'm guilty and if I've done a crime and the cops come walking up my drive, okay, now I'm now that's because of guilt. But we put into fear of people, kids today. Oh, this, you know, everything's a fear. No, everything's not a fear. And since you've taken God out of the schools and you, and you don't want the Bible in schools and you're not supposed to pray in school, which though I taught you last couple of nights, you can pray in school. Well, what else do they have to depend on? They don't depend on God. They don't fear God. They fear the doctor and they fear, oh, if I don't take the red pill, I'm not going to be okay. That's a problem. Let's read on. They looked unto him, God, and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. So what's one of the things that you get is study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now I can put Jehovah Witnesses to shame because, hey, listen, I just give you the scriptures. What, what says the word? So now see, they're put to shame because they don't study the scriptures. They study a magazine. And the shame is, if you don't know God, and what we've read today about anxiety and fears and troubles, if you don't know God, then you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to rely on the God you don't know. And you can't turn to a God that ain't going to help you like Mary or anybody who has no power and has no being. I'll turn to my yoga and all that. Yoga is nothing. Yoga is something you're going to have to take an extra Tylenol when you're done. Come on, what does, I've seen the position, I've seen what they do for these yoga things. and all. What does that do for your anxiety? It adds a backache to it. I'm going to get myself in difficult position for a God that's no, no, I'm just going to turn to God. He'll lighten me, he'll show me. If I am walking properly with him, and I am one in one with God. Now, a fear a Christian should have is, if I'm walking outside God, if I'm walking against God, I'm walking to darkness, I won't get that light. Unless I repent and get right. This poor man cried. David's talking about himself. This poor man. In the state that David is before Abimelech, he's not a king. He's a man on a run. People are after him. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him 
and saved him out of his troubles. Now, there, we know the story from 1 Timothy 21. We know that King Saul died in his sin. We know that God established David on the throne. We know David had all kinds of problems. We know the sure mercies of God. God took care of David because David trusted in the Lord. But that did not stop the troubles from David. And when you get this wonderful prosperity gospel, and you get this wonderful TV evangelism, and everything's going to be great, and everything's humpy dunky. And if you believe in our God, you'll never have a bad day in your life. And when you do have a bad day in your life, then you go to the doctors and, and you get stupid pills. And now you get stupid pills and you got a stupid God that has no alignment with the Bible. Of course, your life is going to be all messed up. When Paul says those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, even Jesus says, listen, you know what? You can't be my disciple if you, you give up yourself, you give up your parents, you give up your family if you hate them. Anybody that hates me, you're to hate them. It's a hard life to be a disciple because you got to go against everybody. You're going to have troubles and problems. And Paul writes of the things that happen to him, all the perils that happen. Listen, the Christian life is not wonderful and great. And, and many Christians are poor. And yet those are rich in heaven. They may not have a big bank account here on this earth, but they sure got a big bank account in heaven. Because they relied on the Lord. And the Lord will get you out of troubles. You want to read about troubles, you read about Fox's Book of Martyrs. There are Christians in trouble. The early church history. And God helped them. God took care of them. The angel of the Lord encamped round, round about them that fear him. The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is Jesus Christ. That angel of the Lord is singular. And we see in verse 7, the omnipresence of God means God's everywhere. Now you can't go, oh, he's in the tree, so I'll go out in the woods and worship. And that's not the kind of, God is everywhere. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the, the good, I mean the evil and the good. But that doesn't say you go out in the middle of the boondocks and I'm going to worship God. I'm going to go out in the middle of the in desert and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to run to a covenant. I'm going to run to a cave. I'm going to run to a monkey area. I'm going to, that's not what he's talking about. Yeah, God's everywhere. But Jesus said, as far as the Christian, where two or three are gathered together. God never wants us to separate our lives from the world. He says, go in all the world to preach the gospel. He said unto the Father when he prays for the disciples, Lord, I pray you take them not out of the world, but through in the world they live and they witness of us. And when you are living right, you've got God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus dwelling with you and working with you. And they're not going to stop all problems. Because if God would give us a comfy, wonderful, great comfort bubble, how would he explain what he did to Jesus on the final night? From the time that he was in the garden to the time he died, that he suffered. He was beaten. He was ridiculed. He was spitted upon. He was mocked. Jesus didn't have a comfortable life. He went into places, he healed people, and he got a hard time. He went into places, they were rejected. He went to his hometown, they were going to kill him. And Christians think they can live above Jesus. Well, I expect a life better than what Jesus got. Really? What gives you a sinner that right when the sinless one, God manifest in the flesh, had a terrible life on this earth? And the worst thing, the worst thing God can do for, for some Christians for troubles is be absent from the body and take, and take you home to be with him. And that's wonderful and great. Only one day to rap, when the rapture happens. But he'll take care of us. But we got to make sure we don't get ourselves in trouble with our own sins. Now, listen, if I go tomorrow and I preach on the street 
as I hopefully will do, Lord willing. And somebody gets angry, someone calls the cops, and the cops are called. Well, I, and we've, been, we've had this situation many, many times, and we're doing right by law and by the Bible. And it works out for the best. And the Lord says, okay, you know. And we've had many different things with our farmer's market, and we were moved to a new position that works out even better than where we were when we first started. God will make it better. And you'll still have trouble. We still have people that don't like us. We still have people there that fight it. And then we get people who enjoy it. We get people who encourage us. You're supposed to have troubles. That's life. Some idiot, oh, life is good. And they put it on a spare tire wrapper. Is life so good when it's the middle of the night and it's pouring rain and you got to change that flight? Is life really good? Is life good when it's on the back of that vehicle and your vehicle's upside down in the mud? Is it good? Life is only good with Jesus. And then he'll take care of us somehow, some way. It says, The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him. You don't fear God. Don't expect God to take care of you. That's that simple. And deliver them. He'll take care of us. He'll deliver us. The worst thing comes to worst. Like I said, the deliverance is, I'll call you home. Oh, I know this Christian, they suffered their entire life. Well, if they died already, they're absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's a great deliverance. If they're still alive, God will take them one day. God will help them. We're not promised a wonderful, great life. Never. You can't find that in the Bible. Yeah, he promised Israel, if you obeyed all my commandments, all my judgments, all my stuff, I'll, gi I'll give you a great and wonderful thing. When did Israel ever do that? We're sinners. And the wages of sin is death. And with, with sin comes, you know, whatsoever we sow, um, whatsoever, yeah, whatsoever we sow, we shall also reap. A lot of our troubles reaping is because we sowed bad seed. Plain and simple. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and that's not to be taken literal. You don't go up and lick Jesus. You don't go up and eat Jesus. You don't go up and, you know, uh, put a little salt and pepper on God. That's not what it is. It's taste. It's like Jesus said, you know, heaven or, uh, he says, every man shall live by, not by bread alone, but by my words only. So we're only particularly have a diet just to work. No, we would starve to death. And yet when you devour the Lord, you devour his words is when you intake all you can intake. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, you can have good meals with the Lord with hamburger rather than having steak your whole life. You know, when you eat the, a, 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 a peasant's meal, not a big fancy meal, when you can just eat a simple meal and have a clear conscience and have a good testimony of the Lord and you got problems, but, you know, you got the peace of God, you got the love of God, you got the joy of God, you got the patience of God, you got the long suffering, you got the fruit of the Spirit and you can just sit down and even if it's a piece of bread, you can sit, you know, Lord's wonderful. I can just say, Lord, thank you very much. And it's remarkable as a family, when we go to restaurants as a family, we will bow our head. We will thank the Lord for our, and we will always have somebody come. I can't believe you did that. I'm thankful that you actually stood there at that table, and as a family, you bowed your head. And you look around, there's 40 other tables, and not one person has ever done it. And you can sit at the table, you can eat, you're not looking at your phone, there's no cussing, there's no booze, there's all cleanness and having a good old time. And we have such a good old time, people looking at us like, what's wrong with that family? Yeah, we're, we're happy in the Lord. That's tasting the Lord. You get out there, it's like, you know, we can actually have a meal together. Out in, out in, hey, you know what? This is something special. 
This is the time we're all together. We're having a special meal. We all can have what we want. Good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's you, Lord. That's tasting, Lord. When you can read the Bible and the Bible speaks back to you. I just, I met, my, my pastor got happy the other day. I'm reading through my Bible. Just reading through my Bible. Uh, I read through the Old Testament. I read for what we're doing, the Psalm, you know, our, our family Bible study, which is Psalms. And then I'm reading the New Testament. I was reading the New Testament the other day on, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I just read past what pastor spoke about Sunday morning. I'm like, I put, hey, pastor, you know, I just read what we just read Sunday. He's like, amen. And God does that all the time. I'll go down, I'll preach at the farmer's market. I'll be preaching. I don't know what I preach. The Lord fills my mouth. He does. I go to church Sunday morning. I go to church Sunday night. And the pastor says something like, that's what happened yesterday. You said you weren't there, pastor. No, I wasn't. The Holy Spirit was. And when you can read the scriptures and it deals with you today, wow, that's what I'm living. Or that's what I'm going through this week. Lord, this is what I help. Now, I'm not a particular kind of person, and I've done it other times. But in, you know, you open up your Bible and you put your finger down. I've done it about a handful of times. Sometimes I've done it like, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't. I read the whole page, like, okay. I prayed about something, and, you know, just, and he brought me into a particular chapter, like, okay. Some people it works. That's tasting the Lord of the Word. That, that is your faith to say, Lord, you are going to speak to me, boy. That, I'm not going to say it works for everybody. I'm not going to say it works. It doesn't work for nobody. But that's somebody who's in the Word and has that faith to do it. So taste. Now, don't eat Jesus. He's not to be taken orally. Taste. And see the Lord, and he is good. I know he's good. My whole life with the Lord has been good. And I had some troubling times. Blessed means happy is the man that trusteth in him, the Lord. You want to be happy? Throw your pills away. Get to the altar. Repent of your sins. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Not only will you be saved from hell, but you might get rid of that anxiety. I said you might get rid of that anxiety. I am not going to tell you if you get saved, all your anxieties will go away. They won't. I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I'm in the scriptures. I preach the gospel. I've been saved since 1987. I have anxieties. I thought a couple times, you know, man, should call the doctor and get a tranquilizer, but I am strong in the Lord and say, no, I don't need it. And salvation is not going to solve all your problems on this earth. It'll solve your eternal problem, but it may help. Salvation did not stop two of my wives dying from cancer. But I'll tell you right now, the fruit of the Spirit got me through both of them. And it's got me faith enough to believe that hopefully God will give me a third wife. There are people who are living without the Lord. They're living with pills. They're living with alcohol. They're living with tobacco. They're living with illegal drugs. They're living with all kinds of nonsense. They're not getting nothing out of it. Because they don't want to have anything to do with God. Plain and simple. Oh, fear the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. We just said anxiety. Fearing the Lord is not anxiety. It's healthy. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fearing the Lord is not a medical deficit. Fearing the Lord is not something you go get a doctor. Fearing the Lord, you get in the scripture. You get to find out with God. You find out that God... And fearing him is a healthy thing. I don't want to upset my God. I don't want to upset my Savior. I do not want to do wrong. I want to do right. I want a blessing from God. Fear you, Lord, he's, his saints. Those that are those that are the children of God. Saints are not unsaved people. Saints don't have to do miracles in their lifetime. Saints don't have to be dead.
saints are living, breathing children of God. For there is no want to them that fear him. I have a lot of wants. But my wants serving the Lord and doing right are not fleshy wants. God knows my needs. And I do have particular wants. But if I do the Lord like I'm supposed to, fear the Lord like I'm supposed to, I am not going to want the wants of fleshly. I am not going to want the wants of sin. I will be satisfied in the Lord. And if the Lord would bless me a little more, bless me. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. There are lions out there are starving to death and God feeds the animals. And yet when it comes to a, a child of God, God will stop feeding a lion so he can take care of his child. Now, what do you do that for, for animal rights groups? You know, we got to say, you know, all these animals are getting saved today. You know, all the animals in Australia from the wire, wildfire, all the, all the animals getting plastic in the oceans and all that. Well, that's man's fault. But why is it you getting all these animals, they're getting this free medical treatment. They can't pay for it. I've never seen an animal with a wallet. I have never seen a, uh, uh, we have down here, they take care of the turtles. I've never seen a turtle with a credit card. Obamacare did not give health insurance to any animal, and yet we've got military vet veterans who are living homeless, who have got medical needs, and they're not being taken care of, and you're taking care of stupid animals that have no soul. And then you get a Christian come up, and, oh, my dog's going to heaven. No, they're not. You show them the scriptures, and they get all mad at you. And these people don't go out and witness to people who have souls who will die and go to hell without Jesus. But the manatees in Florida. And we got license plates. Save the manatee. All right, save the manatee. Give me the potatoes and green beans first, then I'll eat the manatees if they're good. I just upset a whole bunch of people, but I don't care. You and your, your gods and your animals, you upset me. You come out with commercial, feed the children in, in India. Kill the cow, the cow god. You got gods walking around India that are hamburger. Kill them, fry them, cook them, barbecue them, and then feed the children. Don't come crying to me because you're starving to death because your god's walking around mooing. That's the problem. You know why you're starving? Because you got the wrong god. You don't like it? Tough. Goodbye. See you later. We'll, we'll, I'll meet you in glory one day. When you stand at the great white throne, uh, great white throne judgment, and you realize your God's a man, a man, not a cow. Aaron thought one time that, you know, let's eat chicken or something. He was wrong. Wrong. God will stop feeding an animal to take care of his, his children. His ch Listen, God will be out somewhere and somebody bows their head and says, Lord God, I want, I want to be saved. Not only does God stop what he's doing and joins that soul, he sends his Holy Spirit to come and dwell in that soul and all the angels in heaven rejoice because a sinner has come home. You know that prodigal son, when he came home, you know what the father did? He stopped whatever he was doing and ran down the, the driveway and ran down the, the road to meet his son. He didn't let the son come home. He, he met the son coming home. And you know what he said after that? Get the hamburger and put it on the grill and let's have a barbecue. The fatted calf. You got to get off animal religion and get on to open souls that will die one day and they'll die without Jesus. They go to hell. Aren't you glad to say anything about the Jehovah Witnesses tonight? Come, David says. Come. 
That's an invitation. God says, come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white. You gotta pay attention to the word come in the right fence. In Proverbs chapter one, there, there are evil people saying, come, let's go do destruction. Don't follow them. Come ye children. Hearken unto me, David says, I will teach you to fear the Lord. So fear does not come natural of God. You have to be taught it. And you get under a Bible preaching of a King James Bible, a preacher who believes in hell, a preacher who believes in the salvation of Jesus Christ alone, a preacher that believes that God is Jesus, a preacher that believes the King James Bible is the very word of God. A preacher is not swelled up in education, but the, 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 the simplicity of the Bible. And he tells you how to fear God. How do you fear God? Get on your knees and repent of your sin. Realize you're a sinner and only God can save you. Only God can lead you in the right way. Only God can direct you. Only God is seeing yes tomorrow. And we haven't even lived it yet. I don't even know what tomorrow comes, but God does. I'm worried about tomorrow. I, I can't do nothing. God already seen it. God's up in heaven. I don't know why you're worried about it. I, it's going to be great. You just wait. Or it's going to be miserable. I'll take care of you. What man is, is he that desires life? <laughs> Many. Oh. Except for those who got fear. Except for those who got great pain. Except for those who are suffering. Job finally got to the point, man, I, I just want to die. I want to be untimely. I wish I was never born. And loveth many days. You know, the medical field and the pharmacy field are making billions, gazillions of dollars because I want to live longer. And when I want to live longer, I want to not have pain any longer. And when I want to live longer, I want to look handsome and, and beautiful like I was young. Cosmetics. That he may see good. I want, the, I want the pill so I can I don't have to feel hardship. I want the money so I don't have to have hardship. Hardship is life. Life is not always positive. But then again, life is not always negative. There are good things in life and there are bad things in life. And there are bad things in life. There are good things in life. What makes you think that you can get all good? You can't enjoy life inside of a bubble. You got to pop that bu bubble to get life. You, you know, the best things you learn is from the hard times of life. Listen, you don't learn that that stove is hot like mom and dad tells you until you put your fingers on it. Then, ow! I mean, you don't learn the, the, the greatness of riding a bike till you fell down a couple times. You know? Keep thy tongue from evil. How's that? Shut your mouth. And thy lips from speaking guile. In Jesus, what they say was found no guile. If you're going to speak, speak correctly. If you're going to speak, speak holy. If you're going to speak, speak as an inspiration of God. Or shut up. Jesus said, let your, let your conversation be yea or nay, and anything other than that is sin. I believe it was one of the Wesleys. I think it was one of the Wesleys. He would, he would limit how, how long he would talk to somebody. I think it was like 15 minutes. And at the end of 15 minutes, he wouldn't talk no longer. He figured anything over 15 minutes was vain and had no, and he would stop. I may have taken it too far, but... Much talk. You know, all the judge has to do is get a person talking. And you get them talking. And they get them talking. And they get, you know, that's one of the things I, I watch and, and read and listen to Sherlock Holmes. You know what Sherlock Holmes would do? He just lets you talk. And let you talk. And if you were guilty, you would put your foot in your mouth eventually. I like those, those uh, crime. Colombo did that too. You just let you talk and you sink your own teeth. 
Depart from evil. Not only keep your mouth and your tongue from evil, depart from evil and do good. That sounds so good. It sounds so simple, but it's not. Paul even said, the great Christian said, all that I'm to do, I don't do. All that I don't want to do, I do. It's not that simple. And people will come up to you and give you the most stupid advice ever. Well, just don't do it. Are you fighting the same battle I am? Well, no. Then shut up. Like I said, I, I, I have been a widower twice in my lifetime. And I have people come up to me and give me all kinds of life. I say, listen, have you had your spouse die? Well, no. You don't know what it's about. Well, you know, I, I talk about being lonely. Well, you know, you got to have time. Do you know what it's like to be lonely when you've been married X amount of years and now your spouse? Well, no. Then you need to be quiet because you don't know what it's like. You're just like Job's three friends. You're talking and you don't know what you're saying. If you don't know what you're saying and you have not lived the trouble, you don't know how they feel. And those are the worst words anybody can hear when they're suffering anything. They say, I know how you feel because they look at you like, you don't know how I feel. When my wife was suffering, Tracy, I, I tell I, I don't know. I have no idea. And that wouldn't comfort her, but still, she would know I wasn't lying to her. The worst thing you can do is lie to somebody. And when you do say, oh, I know how you feel and you don't, you're lying, you got evil. You need to repent. Sometimes when someone, just be there. Just let them talk. Pray with them. Pray for them. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So peace doesn't come naturally. You got to pursue. You got to go after peace. And yet that's a fruit of the spirit. So how would you get peace today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you. You become a child of the Father, uh, God. He'll adopt you. And then the fruit of the spirit. One of them is love, joy, peace. And I've had tribulation troubles. Listen, I backslid. I still even backslid. I was witnessing. I was doing, and I was a terrible backslider. Not only did I live in the world, but I lived in God. That's God. And pursue it. Go after it. Keep going after the Lord. Keep seeking the God. God. Keep blessing the Lord. Keep praising the Lord. Seek peace. The fruit of the Spirit. Seek God. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He's watching you. He sees you. He'll never leave thee or forsake thee. That means he's keeping his eye on you. Yeah, I've had times like David. Lord, where are you? He's there. He's there. And his ears are open unto their cry. He's listening. But you know what we want? God, I want, I want a hamburger right now. Where is it? God, I want money for all my bills right now. Where is it? God, I want all my prayers to be answered right now. And we want that prayer right then and there. Isn't that, that's not how it works. I've always said before, God is not a bubblegum machine. You don't pop your prayer quarter in and you get the bubblegum when you turn the dial. And some people complain, well, I wanted a red bubblegum. I got a blue one. That's not how God is. And God answers prayer. Yes, no, not now. If you're going to ask something of God and you're not ready for it, he's not going to give. Now, if he does give it to you, it's because you're being a pain in the butt. He's going to give it to you to show, you know what? You weren't ready for it. You would be silly to, to have a 10-year-old son say, Dad, I want to shave, and you hand him the razor. Go ahead and shave. Not ready yet. Not ready. So the Lord's there. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Saved or lost. If you're a Christian and you are living wrong, you're going to face the chastisement of your father God. The angry father. 
And if you're not saved, you're not going to have anything to do with God. He don't love you. Hey, hey, he hates my sin and he loves us. No, he don't. You need to go back and read Psalm 711 again. To cut off remembrance of them from the earth. You don't want anything to do with God. God won't have anything to do with you. He'll cast you off into hell nameless. You'll have no name in hell. And you'll have no remembrance of your family that did go to heaven. Isn't that weird? I got family members I'm praying for right now. They're not saved. I got family members who are in hell today. When I, I'm thinking about them, I remember them. When I get the glory of they... If they're at the great white throne judgment, after that, I won't remember them at all, no longer. The righteous cry. Yeah, see, we cry. We don't have a happy, wonderful, great, wonderful, great life. And the Lord heareth because we're his children and delivereth them out of all their troubles. There's that trouble again. Take takes care of us. But we want it now. We want, we want the convenience. That's a weird word for the convenience. I'm going to go to the convenience store and pay two extra dollars for something if I just go to the grocery store or wait till the next day and get a dollar cheaper. Check it out. Convenience stores charge you more money. It can't be that important. The Lord is nigh. He's near. Present tense. Present tense. Right now, he is nigh unto them that are a broken heart. Your heart broken, God's there. And save it such as be of a contrite, broken, worn, or humbled spirit. Are you down in the dumps? So is God. And God was with Job when he was down in the dumps. And you know what prevented God from doing the work with Job? Those three friends. It wasn't until the forefront, I think, Elihu, I forget what his name is. It wasn't until he spoke that he finally gave Job light. The other three friends, they were useless. And they dragged it out. Job said one time, you know, I'm asking God and you're answering me. I think if those three friends would have shut up, I think God would have showed up a lot sooner. Think about that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. See that? It's no hunky-dory great life. So when, they, when they, uh, a man or woman in the pulpit or whatever they stand at and they get up and they're going to teach God, they're going to say, you're going to have a wonderful great life. You look at them in the face and say, liar! You're of the devil, John 8, 44. Because David said a righteous cry. David said, what did he say? He said, troubles. He said, afflictions. Many are the afflictions. Paul said, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. But the Lord delivers out of them all. Now, you got troubles, you got problems, you got situations, you got, oh, I got, so, I got such a bad life. Watch this. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. That's Jesus Christ right there. That's one of the prophecies of Jesus' first advent. Not a bone of him was broken, yet he was whipped, and he was nailed, and he was abused, and he was spitted upon, he was punched in the face, he was harassed by the Sanhedrin, he was harassed by the Roman soldiers, and all his bones stayed intact. If God could have taken care of Jesus Christ, and he did, he'd take care of us. And realize Jesus Christ suffered the ultimate suffering that no man ever could suffer. He went to hell. And he was sinless. He burned in the flames of hell and he was sinless. Many who are saved will never touch hell's flame. Because of the sufferings of Jesus. That's prophecy verse 20. That's Jesus. Evil shall slay the wicked. You reap what you sow. The wages of sin is death. And they that hate the righteous, there are many of them, shall be desolate. Where? In hell. 
We'll be up in glory, New Jerusalem, singing. Glory. I don't know if we're going to be with our family. I don't know if we're going to be with our church family. I don't know how we group together. But where we are, all saved people under the blood of Jesus Christ will be all praising God. And the man and the soul in hell will be all by themselves. Where's my friends? Where's my beer? Where's the drop of water? You ain't got none. That's what the devil rewards you. That's what wicked be rewards you. You get no, no, you get desolation. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. He bought it. He paid for it with his blood. And none of them, the servants, that trust in him shall be desolate. We're going to be all together in glory. I, I hope. I, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to know each other as a family, but, you know, Maybe we'll be gathered together as a family. My 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 children, my wives, and my my grandparents. Maybe we'll be all gathered together. Those that are saved. Maybe we'll be gathered all together with, with my church family. I don't know how that works, but we'll be all together. And don't forget, if you support missionary and you and you're involved in missionary work, all those are part of your family too. That got saved. I support one particular missionary in, in Sierra Leone. The works there, the, the part that the Lord will have me in part of that, that those people will be in glory, will be together. In hell, I'll party with my friends. You won't have no friends in hell, the Bible says. They'll be there, but they won't, they'll, you'll be desolate. It'll be too dark to see them. Be funny if God put a beer can in your hand and you don't know which way to drink. It's so dark. 